just finished West Ham United 2, Burnley 2 and uh, the stadium in the background there. It's a wet and miserable Stratford this afternoon and I was miserable watching that. Well, that's a lie. I enjoyed elements of the second half. There was periods I enjoyed it. But the highlight in the first half was somebody walking away wearing a pony West Ham jacket. One of those old vintage jackets. I thoroughly liked it. That was as good as it got for me in the first half. Now, just for a little bit of context, where we sit is down towards the Trevor Brooking end. So all four goals were scored in front of the Bobby Moore end. So my view wasn't the best of three of the goals. But I had a really good view of the first one, which was for Fana's one. It's not very often you can concede pretty early on in the game and feel like it was coming and it was deserved. But that's exactly how I felt when Fofana scored. And while I didn't necessarily see the 80 yarder, what I could see was acres of grass in front of Fofana as he encroached on our 18 yarder. And what I also didn't see was somebody coming out to close him down. A fantastic strike by the Burnley striker, don't get me wrong, there's not really anything Ariola can do about that. But it just summed up our all-round play in the first 45, which is just lack of effort. Burnley were dictating the play. We were sitting back, which we were probably always going to do today under David Moyes. But when we got the ball, there was just nothing at all. The passes were sloppy. Mavropanos and Phillips in particular in the first half were the ones that were frustrating me the most with their with their passing or lack of passing ability. But we just didn't get forward. We barely got out of our half. Bowen flashed across, um, flashed across, across, flashed a ball across the six yarder early on. But apart from that, that was as good as it got. Um, really good goal from Fafana. I thought he caused us all sorts of bother today. Mav Panos and Aguer, neither of them could get near him. I seen Alvarez handling better out of anybody else. A, he was only on the pitch for 45 minutes, and B, he was defensive midfield. But really good goal by them. No reaction from us whatsoever. Um, I, to put it in context, I always need a pee during the first half, right? I always need a piss. Had a few drinks before the game, go before a game, but I always need a piss. I'm getting old. I, I need a pee during the first half, but I always hold on till half time. And I could have, today, I could have held on to half time. Don't worry, I'm going somewhere with it. There is a point to this, right? But I could have held on. But I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to go for one in the first half. I'm going to go for a pee. I don't care if I miss a few minutes action because I'm not going to miss anything. When I returned, I said I've missed anything. I said, oh, Bowen had a shot. Didn't really trouble the goalkeeper. That was it. That's all I missed when I took my gamble and went to the toilet. Anyway, they made it 2-0 um, just before half time. Mav Panos on goal. Didn't see it. I could see them working a the ball down the left and coming across. And I seen it in the back of the net. How it happened, I don't know. When I seen it was a Mav Panos, I heard it was a Mav Panos on goal. I sort of shrugged a little bit. Um, he was our worst defender on the pitch, but in the first 45 minutes, he was our best attacker because he was the only player that actually did something outside Burnley's 18 yarder. A nice little run and lashed at it with his left foot, but it was something. It was the only positive thing in the first half. We were crap. That was horrendous. That first 45 minutes from us today was horrific. We deserved to be two goals down. I wouldn't necessarily say Burnley deserved to be two up, but I think we deserved to be two nil down. Slight difference. We had to make changes at half time and we did. And I'll tell you what, the first five minutes, second half, I thoroughly enjoyed it. That was it, five minutes, then it stopped. Um, some entertainment and enjoyment was to return later on in the game. But 45 seconds in, Lucas Paqueta capitalizes on a little bit of an error from the Burnley defender, goes through on goal. I don't really think there was any doubt on Paqueta missing this one and slotted it past James Trafford. 2-1, we're back in the game now. We don't deserve to be, but we are. We're back into the game with, well, the entire second half to play, bar 45 seconds. And it was good to see the reaction of the players. I think the players looked like they came out a little bit fired up. They were all, you know, geeing each other up, trying to gee the crowd up as well. And I think the crowd were with them in the second half for periods of it. I do think that in the first half, not so much. It was, you know, I think the ground felt a little bit empty today. It felt a little bit quiet outside the ground in terms of people rather than noise it's always quite noisy wise but um there wasn't much queuing going on at all um, and it felt a little bit bare inside the bowl as well and i think you could see that in the first half i think people were expecting a poor display from west ham and we got a poor display but in the second half it, it got fired up a little bit for a small period but we just didn't after that we had a small flurry of opportunities but we didn't really do anything i think burnley grew back into the game and the the tempo just died a little bit, which obviously suited them, but not so much us. And we had moments, Bowen had moments, Caduce had moments, Antonio, Paqueta, but so did Burnley. 
Uh, for fun, I still was to causing us all sorts of bother. My for fun, I still couldn't pick out a West Ham shirt. I think Alvarez was running himself into the ground when we were getting a little bit lost in the middle of this park. You know, um, company had Brown Hill in there with Cullen and Berg just to tighten things up a little bit. And I think Suchek and Alvarez were struggling in there a little bit. As the, the half went on, it just got more and more boring. Burnley were managing the game really well. Um, but they were allowed to by the referee. Trafford was taking a year over goal kicks, but he was allowed to by the referee. So why would he not continue taking a year with his goal kicks? And this is where our lack of squad depth came in. Now, obviously, Danny Ings was to come on and make a huge difference. However, during the second half, I was sitting there thinking, we need something, we need an injection of life into this team. And with 10 minutes to go, Ings was to come on. But I was sitting there thinking, well, what do we do? Who do we bring on? Do we bring on Ben Johnson for Thomas Suchek and try and add a bit of energy into the middle of the park? But what do we do? And this is where you can't help but look back at the January transfer window and again, if we just got an attacking player, we could have had another substitution. But nevertheless, Ings came on. But I'll be honest with you, when Ings came on, I thought it was a bit of a Hail Mary from Moyes. Like, what a substitution with purely out of hope. There's no faith that Ings is going to come on and score a goal. Um, Aguirre came off, went to three at the back, Creswell and Sufal tucked in next to a struggling man for Pados. And Danny Ings, I mean, the guy couldn't have done any more, could he? Wow, two unbelievable goals and very unlucky not to score another one. You know, the first one, fantastic little dink over James Trafford, offside given, um, you know, really good chest down by Antonio. I don't know what the offside was. The, the image came up on the screen, to be honest with you, I, didn't, I couldn't tell. I've just got to believe it was the right call at this point. I'm not... I'm not going to sit here and say it's wrong. I don't know. I'm just going to assume it was the right call to call offside. But it, it gave the it gave the team and the crowd a little bit of life and a little bit of energy for the last few minutes. And then Danny Ings was to get an, another goal, a fantastic goal that did stand this time. Ball back by Caduce in this this spin from Ings and the volley from Ings is just sensational. That finish is absolutely incredible. Unlucky not to have another one that. I think it came off the bar. Trapper might have touched it, I don't know, but I think it ricocheted off the bar. I say ricocheted, blundered off the bar. Um, Ings was unlucky not to have a hat trick today, truth be told. I thought he was fantastic. And when they had their opportunities at the end, Burnley, Ings was our best defender. He was the one running all the way back and getting stuck in back there because there was a lot of tired legs out there from the West Ham players. I thought in stoppage time, I thought Soufal was knackered, Suchet was knackered, Bowen. Caduce, I think they were really low in energy, as you'd expect. Antonio had plenty, being a substitute, but Danny Ings was the one that was running around. And it finished 2 2 in the end, and I guess we could have nicked it, but we didn't, we didn't deserve to nick it. Um, to go 2 0 down to the team bottom of the league, and they're not a good side. They're not a good team. There's a reason we were able to come back and make it 2 2 in the end. Sort of half unlucky not to go on and get a winner, but we didn't deserve. A, a winner today why we couldn't play like that the entire game I do not know the first half was just horrific from us there was a lack of effort from that team there was no composers whatsoever and James Ward-Prowse was just diabolical again um, how, how many games is Moyes going to substitute him before he realises that he's causing a bit of an issue if you have to consistently sub the same player over and over now, I understand if you do it for fatigue. Let's just say we started playing Antonio and he had to come off on the 70-minute mark because he wasn't able to do it for 90 minutes. That's different. That's that's not an issue as long as his performance is there. But when you're having to consistently sub off the same player because of lack of performance, it's got to tell you something. I was disappointed to see him start today. Um, I would have liked to have seen Antonio start this game. I was pleased to see him go off. Um, Phillips... Do you know something? Phillips's passing in the first 10 minutes was crap. There's no getting away from that. He, but I do think he battled well for the remainder of the first half. I thought he started to get stuck in a little bit. And I think he was the one player in the first half that I looked at that looked pissed off to be losing. And it was probably only him. There wasn't enough of a reaction from our boys in the first 45. Second half it was. That reaction was there. Vladimir Sufal at one point was clapping, leading the... the the chance for uh, West Ham's Clark Blue Army. He was the one doing all the clapping, but just poor, just really, really poor from us all over the pitch today. I think Paquetta had a really good second half, a really influential second half, but when you, 
we needed to go 2-0 down in order to get that reaction from our players and it's just not good enough today is two points dropped massively it's an absolute failure from everybody involved the manager's got his team wrong the team's come out not prepared not ready to go the players involved were poor uh, in that first 45 minutes today like I said I, can't, I, I know Mavapanos and Phillips would have made successful passes but it's hard to think of any off the top of my head I thought those two in particular the passing was poor James Ward-Prowse was not good at all um, it's the worst thing is I'm not even that surprised I'm not that surprised um, and I think that's the, the, I suppose the telling thing really that when you're 2-0 down to Burnley while well, I'm pissed off and I'm not happy with what I'm seeing I'm not shocked I'm, it's not like wow I can't believe this I could believe this that's the worst thing I could sit there eh, fair enough um, what I will say is though we were lucky to get a point in the end because while we could have pinched it I thought Burnley could have pinched it at the end um, I'm not sure who it was that had the shot that Ariola saved superb save by our goalkeeper Sander Berg maybe should have scored put it narrowly over the bar for Fana wasted a really good opportunity so for all our chances in the second half and there were plenty of them a lot of them like I said a lot of them I couldn't see there was a couple flashed across the face of the goal one looked like Paquette was at the back post couldn't quite get it Antonio looked unlucky Alvarez hit a shot that looked like he'd hit it quite nicely as well but it's it's uh, I need to re-watch the game to see those chances I'm too far away um, but like I said while we had our opportunities in the second half Burnley had theirs as well it's not like it was all one way traffic just just crap really crap from us Moyes has to take lessons from this game because we've got a massive game here on Thursday night against Freiburg it's a huge game 1-0 down we need to win we need to get through into the quarterfinals and I know people say well hang on a minute you're deluded we're not going to go on and do anything in the Europa League maybe not but I do think we can win on Thursday I don't think Freiburg were that good but from what I've seen today it's, it's hard to it's hard to believe that we can go through on Thursday I did funny enough after Thursday I thought we would and maybe once I'm chilled out a little bit and had a drink and made my way back home I might be thinking ah come on Thursday come on just poor poor all around from us today and it's just it's just not good enough a handful of players played well for periods in the game but there was too many players just not good enough from start to finish today from West Ham um, anyway I'm going to disappear if you've enjoyed the video please do drop a like comment back and thumbs up subscribe you to, to this channel and um, myself and Gons will catch up with you to uh, Tuesday night Tuesday night we'll have our preview from Freiburg but I'll be live tomorrow on the other channel round about lunchtime probably 1pm-ish uh, I'll kick off where I'll be able to camera look at the, the team tonight the game today not good enough from anyone at West Ham 